Welcome to EMAG here in Michigan, as you can see from this glorious logo behind me. And I'm with my buddy Mike, who's going to take us through a shop tour today to show you guys firsthand what exists behind these beautiful doors. Mike, I'm excited to get a tour and share this with the audience. You ready to show, some, show them something? Yeah, I'm ready to rock and roll. I, uh, thanks for coming in. And uh, just a quick intro for anybody who's not familiar with EMAG. Uh, we are the North American arm. Uh, for our parent company that's located just outside of Stuttgart, Germany. We are a 150-year-old machine tool builder that specializes in manufacturing systems for precision metal components. And we are excited to show you what's going inside. So Mike, without any more hesitation, should we head inside? Let's rock and roll. Let's do it, my friend. So this looks like the main office area. Yeah, correct. Within this uh, building, we have uh, sales, we have service, we have engineering, uh, we have applications, spare parts, and then obviously out here on the shop floor, this is where we set up, we integrate and perform machine pre-acceptance prior to shipping to the customer for final acceptance. This is where the magic happens, as they say, right? That is correct. Um, what you'll see as we tour the shop floor is a multitude of different technologies. Uh, standing here in front of me is a, a VL3 Duo uh, machine integrated to a hobbing machine. So we have an Op 10, Op 20 cut, transfer over to a hobbing machine, cut the teeth, bring the part back uh, to this machine tending station. And we have a great video on this coming out with MTD and this is typically done in a couple of different machines with a couple of different operators so some of the benefits besides just the conveyor belt that's taken uh, loading and unloading all in the same spot we're reducing the amount of operators that's needed for that process right? Typically yeah I mean historically Tony what you would see is probably um, the green machining done in one portion of a plant and then maybe the gear cutting or the hobbing in another portion and then obviously subsequently the downstream process or hard machining would be done in another portion of the plant. Um, we were given the opportunity by the customer to say, hey listen, uh, we want to automate something. Uh, we want to automate the turning, we want to automate the hobbing. Um, what kind of guys can you offer us? Um, obviously being a, a, a machine tool builder and let's say a systems uh, supplier, we have the capability to integrate the, the, the green machining directly into the hobby uh, as a small little uh, two process or let's say three process manufacturing cell. So Mike, as I'm walking around, I'm seeing a ton of machines here and this is a large facility. Does this allow you to do some turnkey operations for your customers from time to time? Uh, exactly. I mean, uh, as we walk down this aisle, what you're going to see is you're going to see uh, three vertical um, shaft turning machines uh, that will be bookend by a third party technology. So what we've done is we've went outside of EMAG, we've purchased the OP10, and then purchased the OP30, which will book in these three shaft turning machines, and then we've integrated them all into one manufacturing cell. We handle the incoming parts, we handle the robot to the Operation 10, and from the Operation 10 to the Operation 20, which is the EMAG technology, and then when we finish the part, then we take the robot from our OP20 into the OP30, and then from the OP30 into the customer's subsequent OP40 downstream process. And as I'm looking around, I see the innovative technology of what seems to be like inverted spindles. And a lot of times when we think about uh, either tombstones or inverted spindles, it's all about that chip removal. And that's a technology EMAG is very good at, isn't it? That's the premise of um, our, um, what we would call our chuckers okay and even our shaft machines um, you know gravity is our friend when you talk about Emacs machine tool technology because the chips fall from the work holding down below they don't get caught up as you would potentially see maybe on a horizontal machine platform uh, so so yeah our machines are very friendly when you talk about chip evacuation and when we're gonna talk about also the videos that are coming out 
we're gonna have some incredible videos with MTD with Emag, and there's this unique machine over here that's gonna be one of them as well. Would you like to just briefly touch on what's being worked on over here? Yeah, I mean, although um, we specialize in a lot of technology uh, for the automotive industry and, and the powertrain uh, within the within the both the internal combustion engine and now the the, the EV platform. Uh, we also have technology that's utilized outside of the automotive industry. Uh, electrochemical machining is a technology that machines parts via the process of electrolysis. Okay, so it's, it's the exact opposite of reverse plating. Instead of putting material on, you take it off. So this technology has been very prominent within the aerospace industry for many years. It's becoming prominent now within automotive, some industrial sectors, and mo most recently um, actually in the gun industry to finish gun barrels. Uh, it's very unique, it's, it's non-traditional, it's non-contact, um, and uh, as we um, move through the shop, and um, as, you, uh, as, as you say, uh, when we talk about the video footage, I think, that, I think um, whoever's watching this will, 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 will get to see um, what this technology is really capable of, and maybe some of the applications uh, in a little bit greater detail. Yeah, it's definitely fascinating technology. It's not something I've seen a whole lot, but respectfully so, it's something that could be extremely beneficial for a customer who's, who it will work for, right? And you mentioned you know, the aerospace industry, automotive industry, and now the guns as well. They're starting to give you your own planes, automobiles, and guns, right? You've making enough of them at this point. Yeah, I wish that were the case. You have a private plane that flies to <laughs> yeah. and from Emag, right? Yeah, well, I don't live that far, but um, <laughs> maybe a helicopter. Well, then you can come see me in Florida with the plane. So, yeah. something else I really like about Emag as a whole is that you guys are really good at supporting the customer's ideas and the processes that they would like to implement with your strategies from kind of taking one machine, adding another machine to it, if necessary, a third machine or even a fourth machine. You talk about ops, you know, first op, second op, third op, or, you know, that route of it. But from my outside perspective, and we've done this on your podcast as well, I call it a Lego building, which may not give it its due justice, but it's really incredible how well you guys support your customers and their ability to want to create a unique process, you guys can support them with that. Yeah, I, I mean, the bottom line is, is um, we're a systems solution provider. Um, and the machine tool technology within our product portfolio um, lends itself to what you just said. Um, now, the part has to fit, okay? We talk a lot about strategic parts, and if it is a strategic part, then usually we can do more with less. And then, as you said, we can bite off more of the process chain, whether it's green machining, OP10 through an OP60, or after the part is either carburized or induction hardened, you go to the hard machining side of it, we can bite off OP80 through OP150. Um, it's, it's, it's relative to the size of the customer, how big they are, a major automotive OEM, maybe a tier one customer, um, you know, and what the return on investment would be for them because it, it will be different between a major automotive OEM and a tier two or a tier three. But we, we have the capability to do so. If it's just an OP10, OP20, so be it. If it's an OP10 through OP60, that excites us even a little bit more. <laughs> I love it as well. And now we're standing in front of what I believe to be laser cleaning and laser welding. Would you like to touch on that a little bit for the audience? Yeah, I mean, they're two independent technologies, um, so to speak, that we have machine tools for or systems for. This is uh, an ELC 250 Duo machine. It just so happens to have a twin spindle. Uh, and, and theoretically, uh, prior to welding uh, a powertrain or any component, the mating surfaces of both components have to be clean. So therefore, the laser cleaning process offers a lot of advantages to a traditional cleaning process. And if you can do it um, within the machine tool itself, it's much more controllable. Okay, and then obviously you can potentially shorten your process chain. And then the end result is what we believe to be a much better part or a much better component. So I have a strange question for you, my friend. Yeah. And this is not one I prepared you for. This is really great because these are always authentic. You guys are absolutely famous for making gears. If you were to take some made up wild guess about how many gears your machines make per year, how many do you think that would be? It's got to be like in the millions or billions, right? It's just everywhere I look in this shop tour, I see gears everywhere and all sorts of different components. And all the machines are constructed to be able to really complement that process. Um, I think you're right. It would be in the millions. Um, 
We have uh, independent machine tool technology and systems um, with, with every major North American automotive OEM. And then obviously, we're very well entrenched within the European Union, uh, the Germans, the Italians, the French, uh, and then obviously Asia Pacific too. Um, we do, you know, again, strategically, those are our parts. That's what we chase after. That, that's our bread and butter. Um, and, and quite frankly, um, gears aren't the easiest parts to make, so um, there's a premium for them. And um, we are not the, the cheapest solution on the market, um, but we're, we're one of the, the better solutions. And therefore, um, we can show a distinct advantage either with a, a single machine tool technology or a multifunctional technology like some of the machines we spoke about earlier today. Yeah, and highly, highly respected for sure. If you want to talk a little bit about this machine, I believe it's hard finishing, but not just one operation, but multiple operations, which are typically, at least historically, separated. You've combined into one. Yeah, correct. Um, probably about 20 or so years ago, um, EMAG took the, our vertical inverted spindle lathe, self-loading, and uh, said, hey, listen, um, it would be nice if we could perform additional processes on this machine. So from the green side of it, what they figured out is they could add a Y-axis and then they could ax or they could add a stationary a bridge that would accompany a drill, a mill, a tap, okay? Um, whether it's in a vertical position or in a horizontal position, depending on the, the makeup of the component that needed to be machined. And then from, as you said, the hard machining side of it, they said, hey, listen, we've got a 12-station turret in here. What else do we need? Well, for a bearing surface or a seal surface, you need a grinding spindle. So therefore, we incorporated an ID grinding spindle or a face grinding spindle and then an OD grinding spindle, which, again, allows us to consolidate operations, improve the datum structure, and then make the part in a single clamping. So important. All of that is so... Every time somebody mentions and you just did about combining operations. It's just so important to be able to do so as we're all fighting a skills gap, right? Yeah. We're all playing that same game. So as I'm looking around, we're heading into the apprentice program, which I know is near and dear to your heart. But even before we get there, going back to how many gears you guys are making around the world and the fact that it's not an easy operation. As you mentioned, it's not easy. Yeah. How important is quality to EMAG? Uh, if you talk to my quality guy, it's the single most important thing, um, it, because the reality of it is, is, is um, you know, um, you can't have transmissions or gearboxes falling out of cars. Um, you're going into electrification, which means that the NVH requirement from an internal combustion engine to an EV is, is even that much more important, because you have no exhaust system, and you don't have any additional noise outside of maybe the radio. Okay, and, and if you don't change your tires or rotate your tires, maybe you have some sound from the tires. But, but when you drive an electric vehicle, you don't, you don't hear any of that. All right, Mike, so talking about all these machines, talking about all these gears, talking about the importance of quality, walking around this massive facility, knowing between you and I and everyone watching the skills gap that we have in our industry, we now can talk about apprenticeship, the importance for apprenticeship as a whole because we need more people in this industry. We've talked about personally, you and I, the amount of money it takes to go to a four-year school or get a master's degree. You have an apprenticeship program, four to five-year program where guys and gals can come in, get some pay, learn a trade, go back and forth from school to learn this, and then possibly be a part of the EMAG team as well, isn't it? Yeah, correct. I mean, um, the most difficult thing to do today, I think, is to find good talent and then retain good talent. So uh, we start with the high schoolers and give them an opportunity for this mechatronics program where they split their time between the classroom and then hands-on learning, and you can see their shop floor, which has a... Um, a bridge mill, an engine lathe, uh, there's a machine base with a spindle and a turret, there's electrical cabinet over there that they can tear apart, and, and this provides them the opportunity, or us the opportunity, to groom them, okay, over four to five years, uh, compensate them at the same time, and then hopefully retain them to make sure that when we sell these machines and these systems, we have the proper level of support moving forward because um, irregardless of how good the salesman is on the front end, if you don't have the service to support it, you're not going to get that repeat order.
Exactly right. So as we're coming to the end of this tour, is there any other messages you would like to convey to the audience watching right now that you'd like them to know about EMAG, about yourself, about the overall program that's going on here? Anything you'd like to share with them to close this out? No, I would just say um, predominantly um, we specialize in turning machines, but we have six to seven other technologies that we can provide a system for. Uh, from a turning perspective, I would say if you're chucking the part and you're doing it in a horizontal machine and you haven't considered a vertical machine tool uh, or a vertical lathe, self-loading lathe, then consider it. Um, there could be um, the return on investment that allows you to move from a horizontal platform to a vertical platform and I think reap the benefits. Whether you're, well, you're manually loading one of our machines um, that can hold anywhere from 20 to 24 nests or pallets, okay, raw and finished part materials, uh, and allow an operator to walk away for a 15 minute lunch break um, versus you know, a horizontal machine where he has to reach in, load, unload the machine. Um, it, it, it could be um, worth your time to investigate. And as far as the rest of the technologies go, um, you know, don't forget, we, we offer soft and hard milling technology for uh, CVJ components, multifunctional technology for both green machining and hard machining. When you talk about turning and grinding, turning and milling and drilling, uh, we have independent uh, grinding uh, machine technology for automotive-like shafts and non-automotive shafts. Uh, laser tech te technology we spoke about as far as laser welding is concerned, but we also have laser cleaning. We have uh, the capability to perform laser hardening as well. Uh, electrochemical machining we just talked about, which is non-traditional technology as well. So, you know, if, you, if you're looking for a systems supplier for rotational components or round components, we're located at 38800 Grand River Avenue, Farmington Hills, Michigan, and we've been in the same building for 25, 30 years. There you have it, folks. This is my friend Mike. We're in Farmington Hills, Michigan, emag.com for more information as well. I would say come see this guy. Amazing person. Mike, thank you so much for touring us, MTD, myself around. Really a good job. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it.